Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about how to make your textures 3D textures. Okay, honesty and disclaimer time. We're not talking about bump maps. We are not talking about UV texturing. There's no bump maps in SketchUp. UV texturing can be done, but it has to be done through an extension. What I'm talking about is taking a flat 2D material and adding it to geometry, lining it all up so that what you end up with is a much better looking and better experience in that material. Let me give you an example of it and then we'll see how to do it. All right, so here's what I'm talking about. Here's my example. So I have two things here. I have a rectangle, and then over here I have kind of an extruded sine wave sort of thing happening. And both of them have something on them. This one over here, if I grab my colors window, this is the default metal material right here. It's, it's meant to look like a corrugated metal. Um, you can kind of see how that works. Looks pretty good. If I look at it straight on like this, let me deselect it. It looks like highlights and dark lights of corrugated metal. Um, over here, I have just this gray. I don't know, it's like 70% like gray, something like that. Just a light gray, and it's applied to it. The highlights and low lights are coming from the way the shadow falls on the smooth materials. So both of them look good. There's definitely advantages to both. So this is lighter. There's only one piece of geometry. There's one face right here. Whereas over here, there's probably, I don't know, 100 plus. So this is lighter. So if I was worried about keeping my model small, tight, this is where materials come into play. Over here, I have some advantages. Even as I'm moving it around just here, you can see how the light is updating. It's changing as I move. This is a great way to visualize materials. It gives me more depth, that sort of thing. But it does look like it's painted flat gray, right? It doesn't look like metal. So the thing about reflective materials is the thing that gives them that, that I almost said the, said, I don't know what, je ne sais quoi. The thing about them is the way that light interacts with them. It reflects, it causes harsh shadows. The light reflects, bounces between the faces and, and has different effects that you just don't get with a single material without rendering. So both of these are okay, but let's, let's take this a little bit further. Let's turn on shadows. All right, so right here, um, I can see no difference with shadows on over here, except for the shadow underneath. Over here, one of the things I can do now is I can start you know, sliding this back and forth and I can actually change how this material looks, how it actually looks with the shadows in different spots. Also, Niraj is gonna help me out here. Come, come here, Niraj. As I move Niraj across the flat surface, you can see it's obviously a flat surface, right? There's no, there's no, the shadows aren't moving across the material. If I bring it over here though, look at that ripple happening. That's something that can only happen if the shadow is actually falling on a material that has some movement in it. Not the material's not moving, but I mean the faces, one to the next, have different heights. So that's a big difference. If I, if I have Niraj here casting a shadow onto this, versus on this, big, big difference, right? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we might accomplish the ultimate material. Because you just look at this and you think to yourself, there's gotta be a way, he said in a leading manner, to get these highlights and dark lights onto actual geometry like this, and then be able to get the best of both worlds, shadows and materials. I'm so glad I said that that way. Okay, over here I have the same material. This is, this is actually the exact same geometry. I just copy this group over. Um, and it is the same material and it's just got the default white on it right now. So the simple solution would be just grab this and paint it on here, but no, that's not good. So what's happening here? Obviously it's going the wrong direction. Uh, it's repeating in the wrong way. It doesn't repeat that direction. So you can see you have these breaks here. And the other thing I have here is because I have these different materials or these different faces in here, this material is actually being applied to each individual face. What we want to do is we want to project it on here so that the material stretches over these ups and downs and, and gets you know spread out the way it should. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I'm also going to turn off my hidden geometry. So what I got to do is get this material into the model as a projected texture. I'm going to do that by creating a temporary texture that is the exact size of this, this rectangle. So I'm gonna start on the edge here. I'm gonna draw a line straight up. I'll come around to this end here. Draw another line straight up so it gets the same height. There we go. 
and I'm going to connect the two with a rectangle. Just go one corner to the other, and I don't actually need these lines at this point. Now I can take this color, and I can apply it right here, right click on it, texture, and make it projected. So this is simple. We've done videos on projected textures before, and what that's going to do is it's going to just apply. Oops, didn't turn on. There we go. It's going to apply it straight down. So it's like like this is a clear piece of material, a light shining through, and it's going to come straight down and project on here. So what that means is some of these materials are kind of stretched out to go on these these materials that are more parallel to or perpendicular to the surface, and then hit flat on on the ones that are perpendicular. So or parallel. That gives me kind of a cool look. This looks more like metal than this does, right? This looks like plastic, maybe. This looks like metal. And in a pinch, that might be good enough. I might throw that on there, put that on my roof or my side, my wall, whatever, and that looks good. It's not ideal, though, because here I have the highlight down at the bottom, and here I have a shadow up on the top, whereas over here I have a shadow or, or highlight on the top, shadow down here. Um, this isn't perfect, but we can get more closer to perfect by manipulating this texture. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch this texture out so that these white bars perfectly match the highlights of the corrugation here. I'm gonna do that by grabbing a line. I'm just gonna take a line from right here, which I think is the, the top point. Yep, that's the top of that curve. I'm gonna run it up here. Now I'm gonna grab it. I'm just gonna copy it from this point to this point. And I'm going to put one across for every single one. So I'm going to say, let's do that 10 times. Ooh, that was, I'll be honest with you, that was a lucky guess. Apparently, there's exactly 11 high points on here. I mean, I knew that. All right, so the reason we did that, why didn't we just do one of these? Well, the thing is, we're going to take this material, I'm going to go to texture position, um, and we're going to scale it. We're going to make it a different size. We're going to adjust this right here. We could have just put two points on it, and I could have adjusted to those two points. But the fact is, since I'm not lining it up perfectly, exactly the way I need it, it might be a little bit off. And just a little bit of off means each, each one of these highlights is going to fall a little further to the right or left of the peak until I get down here on the 11th. It might not line up at all. So I put all these lines in so I could check my white, my highlights should line up with each one. I'm going to start this manipulation by taking this red one and I'm going to put it on the first point. Now I can grab this and I can start resizing until I get to the right spot, which actually in this one works out really well because one of these tiles of this material goes light, dark, light, dark, and in the middle of the light again, so it hits that second one. By having all these lines here, I can see the light lines up with each one of these, which means when I project it back down, it's going to fall right on there. Now it's not perfect. Look, look at this. Look how it's a little bit off. See that middle line? That light is just slightly over to the side. That's actually this texture. This texture is not 100% perfectly symmetrical. This center piece is just slid off a little bit. It's not enough that it's going to ruin the effect, but that's why every other one is a little bit off and then the others are perfectly lined up. I could probably split the difference here by just adjusting this and pulling just a teeny bit. When you go to resize materials, if you have this jumping happening, it's because it's trying to jump back to that original 100% point. So what you can do is kind of slide it over a release and then start sliding it back and then you won't have that jumping point anymore. So I might go like something like that and find kind of split the difference between the two. But then what I have to do is come over here and look and see how that affected this. By moving that over, I ended up pushing a change in the material all the way to the end. So not ideal. I'm going to go ahead and just snap it right back to that point. This is close enough, this will work. All right, I can get rid of these lines here. I don't need these. So get rid of all you, there we go. And now one last time, B, sample this, apply it here. And look at that, so look at the difference between these two. Right now without shadows, I didn't turn shadows on. I don't need this anymore, I can delete it. But look at the difference between these two pieces of material. So right now without shadows, the highlights are lighter, The shadow the the darks are darker right away i have more going on and then as soon as i turn on shadows then it's going to get even more exaggerated and, and like i bring mirage here let me stand over my stuff so now i have the best of both worlds right i can see the lights darks i can manipulate things like 
how, how light is light, how dark is dark. Um, with metal, it's probably more exaggerated, but I can make those changes and affects it. And it brings in the highlights and darks from this. So I get something that looks much more like the metal I'm intending rather than just some gray geometry. That's what I meant by 3D textures. This was a very, you know, simple repeating pattern, but this could be done with anything. You could even do this with wood grain if you wanted to. You could take the freehand tool, go and trace wood grain and push pull it and make, you know, add that shadow if you really wanted to get in there and show some depth in wood. Uh, but any any shape where you have in the material, there's there's high points and low points. You can go in and trace the geometry and add this sort of uh, you know depth to the geometry you have in there. It's a great way to get just a little more depth without having to go to full rendering. And again, the nice thing about doing that when it's in the model means it's going to look that way when you manipulate it, when you edit it, when you orbit around, when you move through it. Uh, you don't have to worry about going rebaking it to get uh, rendering shots. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, of course, leave us a comment down below. If you tried something like this, are you going to try it? What do you think of this idea? What do you think we should make other videos of? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.